Hi everyone. So this is going to be a very quick demo. Um, I'm going to build a machine learning model and I'm going to make it in a reproducible way, including the data and the model itself, not just the code, which is nice. Um, so to do that, I'm going to use a new LakeCTL command. LakeCTL is the command line utility for LakeFS. Um, so what are we building? We're building a small project. Uh, I called it is alpaca. It's a state of the art image classifier. Um, capable of doing something never before seen. It knows how to take an image and tell you whether or not it believes it's an alpaca. Exciting. Um, so I'm, I'm going to use a data set that I took from Kaggle called Alpaca Dataset for Image Classification. It's a great, great, great library of images. Whether or not you like uh, machine learning or not, you should look at pictures of alpacas. Um, so I have this loaded up into LakeFS. I have a repository um, where I put this data set on. Um, it's divided into two folders, one called alpaca, one not alpaca. So inside the alpaca folder, I have JPEGs um, showing beautiful, beautiful alpacas in all their glory. Um, in the not alpaca uh, data set, I have pictures of things that are, let's say, not alpacas, such as bears and um, other bears and also potentially a camel that's not an alpaca that's correct um, so this is my input data um, i'm going to be using uh, tensorflow i have a very small training uh, job that i created it's going to read data from some input directory i'm going to divide it into training and validation data sets and then it's going to train a classification model um, and generate the model itself. Um, to do this, I somehow need to fit it that input. Um, so how are we going to do that? So I'll, I'll take you to my uh, Git repository on my command line. So we see that we have the project and, and the train. Uh, we also have a git ignore file. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the new LXTL local command. I'm going to say clone because I want all these nice pictures of alpacas, bears, and camels um, on my machine so that I can train my model. So I'm just going to grab the URI from LakeFS. Um, but you know what? I'm not going to be working directly on main. I want, want to experiment with those images. Uh, not all of them are good. Um, so I'm going to create a branch. Um, I'll delete that. Let's create a branch called dev. This could be anything. Uh, as you can see, this takes no time at all. So branching in LakeFS um, doesn't actually copy any of the data. So if I look on dev, I see all the same image files. They're all here. All the glorious, amazing, beautiful alpacas that we have. Um, so let's grab the URI for our dev branch. So you can see this is dev. Uh, let's grab this and just say let local clone uh, and call this directory input because that's where our training job will read from. So it's going to copy over all these files, which is great. We'll have tons of alpacas on our machine. Um, it's going to take a few seconds and we're done. And it also says that it found the git ignore file and added this path to it. So if you look at our git ignore, we now see that input is excluded from git, but this magical lakectl underscore ref dot yaml that's that is included right so if you do a git add and add everything git status will show us that it now tracks this file as well and inside it we have the location uh, where we took the images from including uh, the commit that dev was pointing to at that point in time that means anyone else with a similar file will be able to reproduce our input uh, completely right whether or not images are added or deleted later this training job will rely on input data from this commit. That's cool. Um, so let's run our small training model. What do I have to do? Just call train. So I'm going to say python train.py. So this is going to do a bunch of things. Namely, it's going to divide it into uh, training and validation data sets. Uh, it's going to train the model, and then it's going to output the model in binary form. Um, so let's see what we have here now. So we see that we have this models directory that was added. And inside models, uh, I have one file called slpaca.h5. 
whatever that is. So let's give that a try. So I have a predict job as well. Let's look at that. Um, yeah, so it's going to read an image file. It's going to load it and then tell me if it's probably an alpaca or probably not an alpaca. To make things interesting, I'm going to give it a picture of myself. Um, so let's say Python predict and then see if I remember where I have a picture of myself. <laughs> of course I do. Um, uh, Ozcat's JPEG. Um, that's sad news, apparently. I'm probably not an alpaca. Um, I guess that's correct. So I I'm happy with this. Um, but the thing is, um, if I do, if, if I look at this model, it's stored on my machine. Um, it's not being tracked anywhere. Ideally, I would want this in LakeFS as well, right? But I don't have it here. So what I can do, I can do LakeCTL local add and give it a local path. So in our case, it's going to be models. And I'm going to add it to our dev branch under models. So as you can see, this is now git ignored as well. If I do git status, I see another ref URI, but I don't see the model itself. I don't see the binary data. Um, and if I do git, sorry, take CTL local commit, and I say added and alpaca classifier exclamation mark. Uh, and I also want to add some information when I'm committing um, the specific model. Um, so I already have the input data tracked, but what I want to add is the seed that I was using. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want this job to be reproducible. So anyone that's looking at, at the data set and the model will be able to rerun this job with the same seed um, and get back the same model, right? So I'm going to add models and what it's going to do, it's going to see what I have stored on LakeFS. It sees that I don't have this version of the model. It's going to push it. It's going to commit it. Um, and once that's done, if I now refresh my UI, I see that I don't only have data sets. I also have models. And if I do a blame and go to the commit that generated it, I see that I also stored the seed that was used, right? Um, and I can add any arbitrary metadata that might help me reproduce this later. Um, so let's say that I'm happy with all of this and I also do a, let's just commit on git as well. Um, and now I'm going to do git clean. What this does, it, it removes any object that's not being tracked by git. Right, so this would be the equivalent of someone else on my team um, just cloning this is alpaca repository, uh, wanting to work with it. So if I do find input, all I see is the ref file as well as models. All I see is a ref file, but I want the data. I won't be able to run train again if I don't have the data in place. Um, so what I'll do is I'll do lake CTL local checkout all, and this will check out all the given directories that are currently being tracked in LakeFS. And it's gonna bring back all the image files and models that, that are registered within these files. Um, so first I need the input data. It's gonna take a couple of seconds. And now I need the model as well. Now I can run my prediction and see that I'm probably still not an alpaca. So a great feature for LakeFS, sad news for me. Um, I'll have to work on my alpaca skills. That's a thing. Um, thank you.